So last night, it was I saw on the Wacky Weather app that it was going to be raining, so I put a tarp over my bike and got an extension cord to plug it in to let it charge underneath the tarp during the storm. Well, the tarp blew off, so the bicycle was subjected to about five hours of around here what they call a bad storm, but it, it was just barely any rain. I mean, well, it was moderate rain. It was, it was a nice, it was a, it was, it was a really nice, pleasant shower. But it was enough to totally soak my bike. It blew up the charger. That's fine. The charger's like 20 bucks. It's just kind of a pain in the butt whenever, whenever you realize, like, oh shit, my charger doesn't work anymore. Thankfully, I can charge my battery with just a universal power supply. So I'm pretty flexible with that. Unfortunately, pretty much everything got soaked, like the motor and the motor controller and the battery and the battery box. So I decided to go ahead and drive it to work and to air it out a little bit. So I drove it to work. It went fine because, of course, it's a DC system and it's 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 okay. And and the motor, the thumb throttle unit, and the motor controller are all pretty much pretty much water resistant because. They have like silicon, uh, silicon sealant around all the ends and stuff like that, so it's moderately waterproof. But the main issue was the battery box because when I when I took the batteries out because I figured it would be a little bit of moisture in there, I have all the foam around the batteries, and when I did that, water just spilled everywhere because I pressed in the foam, and so it was just like gal, it's like like half a gallon of water just spilled on the ground. So it was like. Fuck. And then I, I looked at the batteries and they have, well, it's the same design as this, where I just, I just put this piece of plastic over the top, because of course these batteries came from these batteries that I originally got back in 2013 or so, that came in these Hewlett Packard cases. So I just kind of started recycling the plastic and using them as like a cell like cover. Well, this was all fogged up from moisture back here and the paper was warped. It's like, so I took it all, I took them all apart. This is my second battery though. So I have a second battery and hey, I have a Nissan Leaf battery. Now I can just strip some cells out of that if I ever need. But anyway, I so see yeah, I have options. It's not a huge deal. So yeah, I ripped that apart. Let it, I left the parts sit out and I took the foam pieces to the sink in the bathroom and wrung those out and a lot of water came out of those. Let them sit for about five hours then I got a heat gun and dried them all out. They're moderately dry. They're still slightly wet to the touch. Like if you take the foam and you squeeze it, a little bit of water still kind of gets on your hands. So I've put everything back into my bike. Actually, I charged everything on a universal power supply. And I put everything back in the bike, drove it back here. Looks like I'll have enough power to drive it back tom tomorrow. Looks like it has a good 40 miles of range or so, so that's not too bad. And so yeah, tomorrow I'm just going to take it back and let it dry out again because when I get to work I'll just kind of take over the hallway and just like set, it up, set everything out. You know, because like, eh, somebody else needs the hallway, fuck them, I don't care. It's my bike. But, one lucky thing is that there's a lot of people around here in Silicon Valley that have electric bicycles. Or are interested in electric bicycles. And so, I have a few friends, actually a few people I work with, that are that tinker around with electric bicycles too. Because it's just, it seems like it's just a common thing out here where people tinker around with electric bicycles and they... They at least get the hub motor kit, and sometimes they just buy the a lithium battery made for an e-bike. But either way, I actually have several friends that bought the exact same kit that I have, and bought a newer charger, or bought a better charger so charge faster, and they just have the, the stock charger sitting around. And so I actually have several people that are like, hey, you can just have my old charger, it's fine. Because like a lot of people upgrade their electric bicycles to having 10 amp chargers, but to be honest, two and a half amps of charge, it charges my bike in like three and a half hours. So I'm not a huge stickler for that, you know. Charging a bike in three hours, 
when it, when if you ride it 26 miles a day, that's, that's not too bad. Oh well. Looks like I'm still having that, that issue with balance charging the cells though, because the more I use the battery, it drifts, the cells drift more to where the BMS doesn't seem to be able to keep up with how quickly the cells drift in voltage. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I might have to look into getting or building a better BMS instead of the ones that are on eBay. But yeah, that's pretty much about my day. Not right, really, not really bad, just kind of seeing how stuff goes. I'm glad that everything worked out okay with it. Unfortunately, the inside of the battery is very, very rusted. There were a few broken solder joints, so I went ahead and fixed those. So that's good, because I haven't opened the battery since, like, 2013? So that's not too bad. I mean, the battery's lasted a long time, and it's still going now. One bad thing, though, is I didn't have the same colored duct tape that I always had on there. I only had black gaffer's tape. I mean, black gaffer tape's fine. It's really nice, high quality stuff, but I just, I've gotten so used to having green and red duct tape on those batteries. So I'm probably gonna rip that gaffer tape off if I, I'll probably let it air out more. I'll rip the gaffer tape off and add some duct tape onto it. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See ya.